Our final video will be looking at soil consistence, which is very closely related to soil structure, which we looked at in our last video. Basically, we want to know how will those peds behave when they're subject to a disruption, or how will they behave when they're very wet? And that's what the consistence test tells us. There's two types of, of consistence. They're uh, bending in the moisture level. So the one category would be moist or dry consistence, and the other one is wet consistence or stickiness. Now this profile is quite dry, so we'll be doing the dry consistence test, and then follow that with the wet consistent or stickiness test. So for consistence, what we're going to do is subject the ped to a force. And the force for dry consistence, the least force will be squeezing it between my thumb and forefinger, or I can try to squeeze it in my hand, which has higher pressure, or with my foot, which would be the highest pressure of all. So an escalating scale of force to see what the, how the ped uh, uh, will withstand that. And it's uh, one of the things we look at consistence for, for example, is compaction. So if a vehicle moves over the soil, or a hoofed animal does, that's putting a stress on those structural units, and how resistant will they be to that stress when it's imposed on it. So consistence is very useful for looking at issues like soil compaction. So we'll begin with the A horizon. So we're doing a dry consistence tests. We put it between the thumb and the forefinger and we squeeze it. And in fact, that granular unit fell apart very easily. So I'll get another one, small granular units, and they fall apart with very little force being exerted. So in terms of the uh, structure then, they offered a little bit of resistance, and we would say they're slightly hard as our dry consistence class. The B horizon, what we want to do is get a piece that's uh, uh, not quite this large, so we can trim it down a bit until it's more about an inch by an inch or so. And that way we get a sort of a standard comparison for much larger units. So I'll just trim that down and we're going to use this for our consistence test. That's about the optimum size. So I begin with subjecting it to pressure with my thumb and forefinger and I can't break that apart with the maximum force I can exert. I'll use my other forefinger for this one too, and I can't break that apart. If I put it between my hands and add pressure that way, again, even at maximum, almost superhuman strength, I can't break that apart. So finally, I add my maximum pressure to it by putting it on a hard surface and stepping on it and then it breaks apart. Okay, so having added that final amount of pressure, I was able to break it apart. But obviously very resistant to disturbance and equally very resistant to penetration by a plant root, for example that B horizon, a very dense material. And in my dry consistence classes, that's extremely hard. If I couldn't break it apart with my foot, it would be rigid as a consistence class. The C horizon, here's a good size to try with that. So I apply my thumb and my forefinger. I'm unable to break that apart. I put it between my hands and it crushes. Okay, so it's crushed at that point. And as a consistence class, that's a hard consistence class. So the A horizon then had relatively low consistence, broke apart quite easily, easily penetrated by roots or by burrowing animals. The B horizon, much more resistant, extremely hard and the C horizon, somewhere intermediate, a hard, dry consistence class. Now, the wet consistence then, 
what I want to do is add sufficient moisture. So I break it up just like we did for the texture test. I moisten it, and in fact, I saturate it this time, wetter than I did for the texture test. So I'm making sure it's saturated. And what I'm going to do is put a little bit of it between my thumb and forefinger. I'm going to put some pressure on it and I'm going to release the pressure. And what I'm looking for is, does the material adhere to my fingers? And when I release it, will it actually stretch and maintain its contact between the two fingers? And basically the higher the clay content, the greater the stickiness and the more it will stretch between my two fingers. So it's very closely related to the clay content. And this test tells us, for example, how well will the soil bear a strength when it's wet? I mean, are you likely to get stuck or not in a soil? And basically the higher the stickiness, the easier it is to uh, get stuck in a soil like that. Okay, so I've just put a small amount between my thumb and my forefinger. I press on it and I release. Okay, and what you can see is it's maintained on my forefinger, but there's nothing left on my thumb. And there was no stretching whatsoever. So it released very quickly from one finger and remained on the other finger. The lowest consistence class, it wouldn't retain either. It would just fall away. This is the second consistence class. And we would say that this is slightly sticky. Okay, because it's maintaining its contact with one of the digits, but there's no stretching. For a truly sticky one, it would actually stretch between the two fingers for quite a distance before it broke. So this would be slightly sticky. And in fact, the other two horizons are slightly sticky as well. They're quite similar in terms of texture, and hence we would expect, and they do behave the same way for our wet consistence class.